Welcome to Tech Topics. My name is Matthew Gouch. I'm an SRE for Nutanix out of Durham, North Carolina. Today we're going to discuss ESXi performance on Nutanix. Hopefully by the end of the video you'll have a little bit more knowledge on how to troubleshoot a performance issue in your environment. Let's get started. Before diving into a performance issue, something that you should do is gather as much information about the performance issue before opening a case. Some things we would like you to know prior to engaging Nutanix support is when the problem started. Has this been going on for a long time? Did you just notice it recently? The narrower you can make the timeline, the easier it'll be for us. Also, how is this issue being noticed in your environment? Is a user reporting it? Are you seeing it? Are you using some piece of software to determine that there's a performance issue? And do you have a baseline as to what the performance was previously? Was the performance good and then all of a sudden it degraded? Is the performance constantly degraded or is it intermittent? Another question we like to know is whether or not the issue is seen across the entire environment. Does it affect a specific host, a specific VM, a specific subset of VMs? Does every VM have a problem? Has anything in the environment changed recently? The more specific you can be with that particular question, again, the easier it'll be on us. We ask that you be as verbose as possible when framing a performance case, because many of the performance cases we see can be fixed before even collecting data, just based upon the information we receive on the performance issue. After you're done fully framing a performance case, if you still feel that there's a performance issue, some basic data that you can look at to help determine whether or not there's a performance issue can be collected directly from your ESXi hosts. One place we like to look is from the command line on one of the ESXi hosts that has VMs that are experiencing the problem. The command we use is called ESXtop. You just SSH into an ESXi host and enter ESXtop at the command line. It'll bring you up to this default power view. If you want to switch views, there's hotkeys that you can use to switch between the different views. C will take you to a CPU view, M will take you to a memory view, N will take you to a network view, and then there's a few others. The other common one we look at are V, which is for your VMs. For this particular host, you can see I'm only hosting three VMs. Some things we look at specifically on here is whether or not there's any sort of read or write latency. Now, because I don't have anything going on on these VMs at the moment, you're not seeing much activity. What I'm going to do is quickly kick off a file copy between my Red Hat Linux host A to my Red Hat Linux host B, and then we'll go back to the ESX top. And you'll see that these numbers, which were previously zero, are now showing writes and latency numbers for those writes. The latency is about 17 milliseconds from a host perspective. But this is a great way to get an overview of what your VMs are doing. Many larger environments might have 50 to 100 VMs on a particular host, and you can go here and see which hosts are the heavy hitters and which VMs are causing you the problem. And then from there, you might be able to further narrow the issue. Now, when you're in these views, you can also add and remove fields by hitting the F key. As you can see, this brings up another menu. From this menu, you just type the letter of the field you want to add. So say I want to get the VM ID, I would type the letter A and then hit enter to return back to my view. And you can now see that there is an ID field on the left side. And you can add and subtract fields as needed. Another option you have with ESX Top, in addition to viewing it live time, is to actually capture results to a CSV file. I'm going to enter a command at the command line here that will capture 200 seconds of iterations of ESX Top. So at your command line, you would type ESX top dash B is in Baker, which stands for batch mode, dash D, which is your delay. We're going to do a two second delay and dash N, which will provide the number of iterations. We're going to do 100 iterations with a two second delay, which will capture roughly 200 seconds of performance statistics. What you want to do is pipe this out to a file name. So we'll call it ESX top capture dot CSV. And this will continue to run while this file transfer is going in the background. As you can see, it's still transferring. This run will take roughly three minutes. What you can do with this file once it's complete is use WinSCP or some sort of secure copy program, and you can download it to a Windows host and open it in Perfmon. So I've already downloaded a CSV file that I collected earlier. As you can see, it's right here. To run Perfmon in Windows, you just hit your Windows key, type Perfmon, and you can open up your performance monitor. And you can basically load that CSV file into Windows and view it from a graphical perspective. So you want to go to Properties, click on Source, click Log Files, click Add. You're going to browse to the directory in which you saved your log file. And then after that, you want to go to the Data section and add 
um, columns that you'd like to view. For example, if we wanted to see load on the disk, you could click physical disk, hit add here, hit OK, hit apply, and you can see the physical disk statistics that were captured on that performance graph. I'm going to make this a little larger so it's easier to view. Perfmon is just one program that can analyze these files. A few others are Visual, ESX Top, you can use Excel, and there's also something called ESX Plot. VMware also offers a couple other options to view performance. For example, as you can see, I've pulled up vCenter for this particular test cluster I have in our lab. You can highlight the cluster name and then click the Performance tab. This will give you an overview of performance for the cluster. On this right-hand side, you can select a few different options for what you want to view. So we'll click CPU, and you can see CPU statistics. In addition to a cluster level view, you can dive into each host and also see the same type of performance data. There's a few more options here to look at. You just pick what's applicable for your particular situation, depending on what user complaints are or what kind of performance issue you perceive is occurring. In addition to a host level view, you can also dive into a VM level view and see the same performance tab. This will allow you to view specific performance metrics for the VM. As you can see, there's the same list of options here on the right side. You can also, if you don't have vCenter, open up your vSphere client directly into a host and do the same type of analysis using the, the GUI information in there. Something else we like to look at as a support person is um, DRS. If you have DRS configured in your environment, you can click the cluster at the top, click Summary, and you can view the resource distribution chart. This pulls up a nice chart that'll show you kind of how VMs and resources are utilized across the cluster from a CPU perspective, or you can go to a memory perspective. Now, this cluster is not very big, but if you had hundreds of VMs in a cluster, this might be useful for you. DRS should automatically balance out the cluster, but this could help you isolate a particular host that's maybe using more resources than other hosts in the cluster it can help you maybe manually balance out a few VMs that aren't being picked up correctly by VMware. In addition to DRS, something else that you could look at, which is a very quick way to see like an overall view of all the VMs in your environment, sticking at the cluster level, you can click on just the Virtual Machines tab. And here you can add or remove columns based on whatever you feel is needed for this particular performance issue. And then you can sort. One thing we normally do is maybe sort by CPU usage, and you can see which VMs are utilizing the most CPU. So you might have a particular person in your company that's doing a lot more work compared to some of the other people, and you could isolate that based upon VM name and then reach out to that individual and find out what it is they're doing that might be using a high amount of CPU and or memory in the environment. This can help you quickly isolate what VM is causing maybe the most pressure points in the environment. If you're not able to isolate your problem using vCenter or the vSphere client, another place you can look is Prism. In Prism, there's a lot of options to kind of look at performance within your environment. The first place I like to start is if you click the home, you go down to hardware and click either the diagram or the table view, you can view specific host performance metrics. So you can see this is giving you a performance summary, and from there you can click on a particular host that might be problematic and kind of take a look at the host performance overall within your environment. Additionally, you can click on individual disks and see disk usage and disk performance, which is useful if you think you might have a disk that's hot. This can help you balance out VMs in the cluster, although we should be automatically doing that through our curator process. In addition to this hardware view, you can also look at the VM view so if you go here, click VM, and then click Table, it'll pull up a list of VMs. Again, there's not many VMs in an environment, but most customers have hundreds of VMs. And this is a great way to be able to quickly sort VMs by high CPU usage um, or high memory usage just by clicking the column. This, again, will allow you to do what we were trying to get at from the vCenter client, which is to quickly isolate top VMs that are using resources within an environment. And if you see a particular chart that you are interested in, like cluster-wide CPU usage, you can hover over the chart and click the Add Chart to Analysis page. And that'll bring you over to the next part I would look at for performance issues, which is our analysis page. Within the analysis page, there's a lot of options. The web console guide will cover many of these options. By default, you're going to get 
a few graphs that we pay most attention to, which are your disk IOPS and the overall cluster CPU and memory usage. You can also see at the top is the chart that I just added from the other page. You can save the chart if you want or remove chart if you only need it temporarily. The advantage of the analysis page is that um, you can do a better time scale. So right now we're looking at roughly a three hour view, but we can look at it over the course of a week or you can go up to a month if you need to and see kind of how the cluster's been behaving over a longer period of time. This will also help answer some of the questions in the framing portion of the case, whether or not this has been an ongoing problem or something you noticed recently. This can also help to pinpoint any changes that were made in the environment. For example, you might see cluster CPU and memory usage slowly increasing over time and or disk IOPS slowly increasing over time. This simply indicates that maybe more VMs were added to the environment or the VMs that were in the environment are doing more work. In addition to PRISM, there are a few hidden pages, if you will, that you can gain access to simply by allowing the port through your firewall. For example, the 2009 page, which will exist on every CVM in a cluster, gives you statistics from Stargate's perspective, which is our process that handles access to and from the disks. So I've pulled up the Stargate page on one of the CVMs just to quickly show you what type of information this page will provide. As you can see down in the hosted VDisk section, you can see the different VDisks that are hosted on this particular CVM. And if you keep hitting F5, you can refresh the page and see the operations that are going on. I did start a file copy earlier in the presentation, and you, you can see this file copy that is still ongoing, and this shows you the right kilobytes per second and the average latency in microseconds, which is we're, we're about half a millisecond latency for this particular iteration. If you keep hitting F5, it refreshes the page and shows you live statistics from a Stargate perspective on the cluster, or in particular on the CVM. And you can go to each CVM and access this page. This is a great way to see from a Stargate perspective what type of latency and or operations are going on in the cluster. Also, if you scroll toward the very bottom of the page, you'll see all the disks owned by that particular CVM. You can see on this particular file transfer, most of the work is being done on the hot tier. This is one of the SSD drives. But if you did see a lot of work being done on your SATA disks, that could cause a bit of a latency problem in an environment that was maybe heavily utilized. It's something definitely to pay attention to and to kind of make notes on before opening a case to support. Hopefully this has provided you with some insight on how to troubleshoot a performance problem in your environment. Remember to subscribe to our channel if you haven't done so already and keep checking back for new videos.